In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix and drain out the water accumulation from a BMW 4 Series and hopefully prevent the problem. You'll need a T25 Torx, a approximately 13 to 14 millimeter Allen screw, or if you're like me, you can 3D print one, a pair of large flush cutters, and also a car jack and drill set if you're also planning to do the full fix. So I was driving my uh, BMW around and could hear a water sloshing around the vehicle. After watching a few videos, I saw a description that had quite a good process for fixing this problem. Uh, so I'm in the process of doing that now. What I've done is removed the side skirt. See how I've pulled the side skirt up and let it rest just in there. And I've done that by removing these uh, torque screws from the underside of the vehicle, this sort. There's about nine of them um, that run all the way down this side skirt. I've just removed the first six or seven. So the point that I can pull this side skirt forward, like so, held in place by those clips, but they pull out pretty easily. Um, and you can see the remnants of all the gunk that I've now been able to clean out a bit, and I will do more of that shortly. The problem is that where this side skirt and the flap here sits, it actually blocks this release valve here, especially when it gets full of all that gunk. This piece, that's where the water is supposed to drain out from. And uh, yeah, it's, a bit of a pain and not the greatest design from BMW. Um, the suggestion is to drill a hole through here, this piece here, so that it, it can then, water can run all the way through. Just what I'm gonna do now, but firstly, I need to actually remove this, this plug here, and you can just sort of see that it is an Allen key. Um, supposedly it's 13 mil Allen key, which I don't have, but thankfully I do have a 3D printer. While I was impatiently waiting for my printer, I thought of another thing that you might have lying around, which is a bolt and a screw. So what I've done here is put the bolt through the screw, obviously, and tighten with a, a third bolt. It was slightly too small, so I've then wrapped a load of tape around it. And doing so, was able to turn this part in here about a six of a turn counterclockwise and that's then released this thing here, which as you can see is absolutely full of gunk. And that can all have a nice clean now, but the water has all drained from this section already. So I did that earlier. Give the part a good clean out and then it's ready to go back in. Though actually, that could also do with a clean out in there. Push that back in. Hear that little click. Check it's not pulling back out, and you're good. Get some more of the water pouring out from earlier, where it was all stuck on there. This is the first section where we're going to need to drill a little hole through, a little cut out. So you can see how when it's pressed up, there's not a lot of room for water to leave, literally none. Uh, and as soon as you've then got a bit of gunk on there, it's not coming out. Anyway, we're now going to repeat the second process. Well, same process, say second side. This one's still dripping where there's so much gunk it won't even uh, let this side drain. There you go, here we click. Whoa, let it out. Jesus Christ. Well, you see why that job needs doing. <laughs> That is ridiculous. 
absolutely ridiculous. BMW, you have designed an absolutely ridiculous thing here. Crazy. So we're gonna drill through this point here so that it has a clear run through for the water to go down. So I've just used a pair of these clippers to cut out a square from here so the rain can actually escape as this fills. Now we'll do that on the other side as well. At this point, you can then clip the bumper back on and re-screw in all of the torque screws. Then you're gonna to need to jack the car up and you'll be able to drill in the final hole. Once you've jacked up, you can see where we cut out the square earlier and drill into the center of that with a pilot hole and then progressively larger holes. And then that hole there goes through into the drain away that we showed earlier. And uh, once you've got a hole drilled out, you might want to use a file just to file down the edges and uh, make it as big as you possibly can. Now with that done, hopefully I won't be seeing scenes like this again. I can't believe the incompetence in design here. It really is crazy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do give a like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to stay tuned, you'll see how I designed and printed the Allen key, which I didn't end up needing for this video, but that's the sort of content I normally share on this channel. So in Fusion 360, I drew a hexagon and then perpendicular to that an L shape, which I could then use as the guide path to extrude the hexagon along the path and make the hex key pretty simple. I used a fillet between the two lines of the L shape just to ensure that the path created was nice and smooth, as you'll see here. I then exported the file and dropped it across into Simplify 3D, which is my slicer of choice. I also ensured that the settings were set to an infill of 100% and nice fat chunky layers so it's extra strong and then printed in my new filaments, which is 3D Tomorrow BioPro, an engineering grade biopolymer, an alternative to PETG and ABS.